and younger. He's the author of War, about a platoon in, of fighting in Afghanistan. He also co-directed the Afghan war film Restrepo with his friend and colleague Tim Hetherington, who was killed this past April while covering the fighting in Libya. It's nice to see you again. You too. How, how, how is his family? How are you? Uh, I'm holding up. Uh, his family's holding up, but it's been you know, pretty much the hardest thing I've ever gone through, and I'm sure for his family as well. Uh, some of you may have been here with us a, a couple of months ago, I guess just right before the Oscars, when, when, uh, when they were on here together with us. And we heard about it, and a certain pall fell over the newsroom. So many of us here have, have seen that movie, and, and it's so moving. And to think that, that this uh, talented young man is no longer with us is, is really kind of hard to process. And I wonder about the life changes that this has brought upon you. You know, he devoted his life to documenting the human cost of war. He's now part of that cost. And I've covered war for almost 20 years, and it cost me something psychologically sometimes, emotionally sometimes. But this is the first time I've really, I really understand what war means. It means you lose the closest people you have in your life. And I knew that abstractly, but not, not personally. And it really was pretty stunning. And I think after 20 years, I'm, I think I'm pretty much ready to not get shot at anymore. I'm going to keep doing my job, but not from front lines like that. I read that that's not about you as much as it is about seeing what spouses have gone through. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm understanding what it means to lose someone, someone you're really close to. And because I've been suffering this for a month because of Tim, and I, suddenly I looked at my life and I thought, wow, if I lose, I mean, I'm, I may, I've made some peace with losing my life in a war zone. Like, and you can't, you have to do that to even go there. But I realize, like, no one else is, is all right with it. No one else in my life is all right with it. And I just don't want to cause that kind of devastation to people I love. Like, it's, it's unthinkable to me now. Uh, this idea of peace from Libya and all that is surrounding us at this moment and what clearly is our third war is, how, how does that affect you? Well, I mean, thank God we don't have troops on the ground. I think that's a qualitative difference. Um, uh, and it, that really puts us in a vulnerable position and in a way that just using air power does not. So they're really, you know, you can call it a war, but it's not a war like Afghanistan is. It's a really different thing. Um, of course, they're suing for peace. They're losing. And I'm sure Gaddafi has seen bin Laden go down. He's seen Vladic go down. I'm sure he's thinking, wow, this, is, this could get tough. Help our viewers understand the importance of the capture of Mladic. He is clearly, if the accusations are true, an absolutely disgusting and vile human being. You know, I was in, that was my first war. I was in Bosnia in 93, 94, and, um, you know, we were, we were in a city like Masrata. It was Sarajevo. Um, and he shelled s snipers. Something like 15,000 civilians were killed in Sarajevo. Uh, and, you know, Mladic oversaw that as well as the massacre at Srebrenica, where they weeded out the men and boys from the women and machine gunned them and bulldozed them into pits. And that's an hour flight from Vienna. I mean, this is in Europe. And that finally triggered NATO intervention and it stopped the war, thank God. But, um, yeah, if, if they can prove the link between those crimes and Mladic, he's an absolute animal. While the folks were at home were watching a commercial, you were, you were suggesting this, this uh, first, uh, uh, the, the two who have just been captured, the killing, the killing and now the capture, and you, you were suggesting that maybe somebody in Libya is taking note. Yeah, I mean, if, you know, Qaddafi's got to be realizing, um, and so do some folks in Pakistan have mm. to be realizing, Mullah Omar, if he's alive, the Haqqani network. Um, they've got to understand that the, that the U.S. Special Forces can actually go in and get them. And I think that is an incredibly effective pressure on their actions. Mm. And I hope it leads to a good end. That would be great. Sebastian Younger, it's always great to see you. Thank you. Best to you and, and his family as well. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, putting an early wrap on Studio B today so that we can get to Neil Cavuto on time this afternoon. Final bell about to toll. Context and perspective next after a quick commercial break on FNC. My doctor said most calcium supplements aren't absorbed properly unless taken with food. He recommended Citrical. It's different. It's calcium citrate, so it can be absorbed with or without food. Also available in small, easy to swallow petites. Citrical. I was diagnosed with COPD. I could not take a deep breath. I noticed I was having trouble climbing the stairs, working in the garden, painting. My doctor suggested Spiriva right then. 
Spiriva is the only once daily inhaled maintenance treatment for COPD, which includes chronic bronchitis and emphysema. I love what it does. It opens up the airway.